Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the second update which has been released recently for the ATR42 and ATR72. Now as is becoming quite common with the updates for aircraft, the change log for this is rather huge. A lot of the things they have added are simply little bug fixes, refining details and making the aircraft generally just more realistic. However, there are a couple of really big integrations and new features that have been added in this update, which we're going to take a look at today. The update itself has to be downloaded from the content manager. So once you're in your sim, check for updates that are available and there you will see an update for the ATR. Now it is quite a sizable update, 1.26 gigabytes in fact, and given the fact that it downloads it and unpackages it all at the same time, it actually took me quite a while to install this update. I guess maybe something the team could look at at Flight Sim 2024 is how downloads and unpackaging is all done because it does seem to take quite a long time even if you've got a fast internet connection. Now the external model hasn't changed at all. Everything with this update is all internal. However they have added the Highline liveries for both the ATR42 and the 72. Basically the Highline liveries is sort of an executive version of the ATR, sort of a private aircraft so I guess you could hop on board and basically fly this aircraft anywhere in the world you want and it would still be semi-realistic as it's not a specific airline. Now this actually really appeals to me because whilst I like to fly real world routes in real aircraft, the fact that you can now fly this gorgeous aircraft anywhere you want and still be realistic is a huge plus. So I think that's a nice touch with this update. So now we're on board, let's first of all have a look at the SimBrief integration. So I've just gone and created a quick flight plan and you can see obviously if you've not already got a accurate SimBrief profile for the ATR then you can download one from our Discord server available in the pilot's briefing room and there's a link to that in the video description. So I'm just going to quickly generate this, hopefully then once we've done that we'll move to our EFP be and have a look at how that integration works and just how well it imports all of the waypoints. Now that's been generated, just have a look at the PDF version and then we'll be easily able to see the actual flight routing which is shown just here. Okay, over to our EFB then. And of course, the first thing we're going to need to do is pop in the pilot ID. Now, usually, if you're used to the fly by wire or the Phoenix, it'll usually ask you for your username. Of course, this is different. The pilot ID is a series of numbers, your pilot ID from SimBrief. This can be found on SimBrief, so I'm gonna pop mine in here. These aren't exactly secret, as I yeah, often, if we're doing group flights, you guys want to follow the flights we're doing, so you can use my SimBrief profile in order to gain my latest flight plan so I'm just going to pop that in what oh, we got it is uh, four one seven four two oh and enter that now that's been done hopefully we should be able to click import and the flight plan should bring itself in there we go that is the full flight plan it's been loaded with the correct departure runway the correct arrival runway and i do like the fact that now also as a little new feature you're able to get the meta for the airports as well as well as the forecast because this was something that previously in the atr we couldn't do if you've been watching any live streams i've done in this i've normally been asking you guys quickly to just grab the latest meta for our, uh, our destination airport so now finally we can get weather information information in the tablet, which I think is a huge plus. So as the sun is rising here in St. Martin, I'm going to power up the aircraft and then we'll use the SimBrief import to have a look at how it imports things into the uh, into the McDo. So obviously we're going to just pop the battery on and then connect the external power. I'm not doing a full sort of setup and following all the checklists etc for this. We just want to see how the new update works for this uh, for this aircraft. So that's now done. 
and I also will have a look at the hotel mode because this has changed ever so slightly as well following this update so we we'll just wait for the systems to come alive and then we'll come back to our flight plan and using the set flight plan button that should then bring everything straight into the McDo so we don't have to actually go and type this in now whether this is realistic for ATRs, I'm afraid I don't know. If there's anybody out there watching the video that knows if it is realistic to get sort of an ACARS uplink with your flight plan and all the details, then please do leave a comment down below and let me know. Some airlines might do it, some airlines probably don't. Obviously, it's more common in larger airliners like the uh, A320 and 737, and of course, larger airliners than that. But for small regional prop airlines, I'm not sure. So would love to know if you guys have got any insight on, uh, on that, just to try and keep things as realistic as possible. Of course, uplinking things in SimBrief, like at the touch of a button, is obviously a great time saver. How realistic it is, though, I'm not entirely sure. So now the aircraft is powered up and the box is up and running, let's hit the set flight plan button and see how well it brings this information into the box. So we've hit set flight plan. There's no sort of uh, color change or anything to let me know that I have certainly selected that. It would have been nice if there was something just to confirm it. But I guess if we now come over here and have a look, there we go. That has been brought in. Now, the next thing to do, of course, would be to check that all of the actual waypoints extra that we've got in here are actually shown in the box. In order to do that, however, what I'm going to do is have a look at the real operational flight plan. And because some of the waypoints are not going to be shown on here, just because you can see there are there are a couple of airways which in your operational flight plan, it will show you those, but on the flight routing it doesn't. So let's go and have a look and see how well that has worked. So I've just popped out the display screen so you can see it. So obviously if we look at this we can see we've got our departure airport, we've got our arrival airport and we've actually only got two waypoints uh, between the two VORs actually looking at the identifiers. So if we have a look at the actual um, flight plan. This is the flight plan. So it hasn't imported the standard instrument departure. That's no biggie. That's pretty straightforward. You'd get that in the uh, in the Airbus as well. Um, but what it hasn't done is seem to bring in any of the airway waypoints as well. So we've got Anu, which is just there. We've got Papa Papa Romeo just there, which is the last waypoint. And then we're going direct to the destination. So what about um, the departure Elopo and the uh, the airways, the B520 and the A312? So we probably need to go in and add those ourselves. Okay, so let's put in our departure. So we're going to be departing from runway one uh, zero, which I can select down here. Uh, then it's the Modo two departure. There it is. That then goes out via Elopo, one of the waypoints we spoke about. So execute that. And then from Elopo, we want to take the Bravo 520 airway. So I'm presuming we can now select this, select the airway. There's the Bravo 520. And if we then execute that, it should go straight to uh, the Alpha November uniform. Now, if that's not an option on here, let's just go to our next page. Uh, and there it is actually down there. So execute that. Now let's have a look at our uh, our flight plan that we've got in. So that is the departure, the standard instrument departure. El Lopo is now in. Uh, the Bravo 520 Airway is in to Alpha November Uniform. And then after Alpha November Uniform, there is another airway, the Alpha 312, which you might remember. So we'll have to select that, go back to the airway, Alpha 312. That then takes us to the Papa Papa Romeo, which is there. Execute that. And now if we have a look at our flight plan, hopefully everything is there. Just be careful, of course, of duplicate waypoints. I perhaps didn't need to add in that Papa Papa Romeo at the end of the Alpha 312 airway because it was already there. So just for uh, clarity, we can clear that and execute 
But that has actually made it a little easier. Okay, maybe not perhaps for a quick route. I could probably have just entered that manually just as quickly. But for longer routes with lots of waypoints, lots of airways, I suppose it's a bit easier. We'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments whether you find that integration uh, a good thing or whether you'd still rather just enter that manually. Okay, let's have a look at some other features. So you'll probably be aware as well, if you have been flying this aircraft, that to set the payload and the fuel, etc., you used to have to use the uh, the menu tab here and obviously then you just slide the payloads etc and fuel to get that as close as you could uh, to your flight plan if you were using one hopefully now we can do away with this and we can actually just load everything uh, from your uh, Simbri flight plan setting the fuel and setting the payload so if I just quickly double check what my fuel should be uh, so my plan block fuel for this flight according to my flight plan is uh, 1894 kilograms so if we have a look at the fuel there it is ramp fuel is there that's just confirming it so if we now set that again there's no sort of confirmation in the box that i have just clicked my mouse on there um, and then if we perhaps just look up here and see what uh, what it says uh yeah there we go it has indeed set the uh, the right fuel so that's done there obviously then there's no option um i can see at the moment in here to sort of type in the fuel that you want to load and then press the set fuel this just brings it in straight from your operational flight plan now the danger with that of course is as i'm sure you're aware if you're familiar with this channel is taking the plug fuel is usually not um, is not done normally you'd always take a little bit more uh, just for things like uh, having to hold or maybe there's some weather that you're taking into consideration at your destination so plug fuel is uh, is not always the norm you'd usually want to take a little bit more but using the set fuel button literally will load in your plug fuel your planned fuel uh, for the flight so it might still be worth going in and just adding a little bit more using the weight and balance page of course the payload however that should be pretty spot on so the payload for the uh, the flight that I've just got set up at the moment is 4558 there you go the total payload shown just here uh, it also just gives you a, a little bit of a breakdown with uh, regards to how the passenger weights have been worked out so if I now set that payload I think I just saw the aircraft move ever so slightly then as I was looking outside. Uh, it does mean, once again, if we just cross-check that, uh, we've got a payload shown of... Well, that's interesting, actually. The payload there is shown to be 6612. Now, I wonder if that is also just adding in um, a little bit of cargo weight. I wouldn't have thought so, though. So let me just confirm that I have indeed pressed the, uh, the payload button. Um, as I say, there's no feedback that I've set that. So let's just try that again doesn't seem to want to uh, want to change that does it for some reason so if you guys have any idea what it is I'm doing or what I'm not doing uh, correctly just there because I'm pretty certain we should be getting that uh, that payload figure of 4558 as shown on uh, on here but there we go um, I suppose if that's not working for for whatever reason then um, perhaps we need to uh, we need to do something else or just use the weight and balance menu the only other thing I can think of is perhaps um, if we have a look at our aircraft maybe uh, the doors need to be open so that we can actually set the payload who knows so I'm just gonna open all those doors and uh, let's let's just try that again maybe they're being that realistic so I'm now just press that set payload button um, again and uh, well let's see <laughs> no it hasn't changed I thought I'd give it a go but <laughs> there you are uh, all right well sadly um, that doesn't seem to want to work properly but uh, if you guys manage to get that working I'd love to hear from you let me know down in the comments okay let's have a look at uh, some other new features so just before we do that I was obviously just trying to get the payload to work and it wasn't showing correctly in the weight and balance screen however if we have a look I've just discovered if we um, have set the payload and then we go to the payload screen here you'll see that actually it has brought in the correct payload weight 
it just now obviously means that this function is defunct. But if I just scroll up a little bit, if you check the payload weight there and see this moving up and down, so that does indeed affect it. But if I now just close that down, go back to my flight plan, set the payload, jump to the payload screen, it is now showing it correct. So um, yeah, not quite uh, not quite sure uh, why the, uh, the weight and balance screen isn't updated. But I guess it means that this is no longer in use now following this update, which I consider to be a good thing because I hate this window. So let's get rid of that. And now we can go and check some uh, some other new features. You'll also notice now that when we come in set up cold and dark, the fuel shutoff is correct and set. However, the propeller brake isn't on. What you're going to need to do is, I believe, make sure that you use the uh, hydraulics auxiliary pump in order to pressurize that system. So now, once you've done that, you'll see that that is indeed ready. So we can get that turned on. And then once that's done, we'll be able to uh, use hotel mode to power the aircraft just as before. I seem to have turned on the windscreen wiper as well there. So the click spots, I think in this, not always perfect because as you can see, just trying to turn that prop brake on, you're gonna have to move the screen around to uh, to get that to uh, to get that to work. So just try that again. There we go, prop brake is now on. And that should mean that we can start the aircraft in hotel mode power the aircraft up and then get rid of the external power. If we now take a bit of a more detailed look at the payload screen as well, you can use this to set everything that you need from your operational flight plan rather than doing it in the box. So if you go to load aircraft, you can see the empty weight is uh, is 13340 by default. Again, depending on what you've got in your flight plan, you can uh, enter the values that you need here. So the zero fuel weight for my flight plan today should be 17568. So I can presumably go and change this. Now it doesn't work with your keyboard, so you're going to have to use your mouse um, to pop this in. Uh, so 17568, that's set. We already know the fuel has been loaded. So if we now hit start loading, that is then done. And I believe that's done instantly. So close that down. And then you've got all of your final figures. With that then, you've got your takeoff trim, also the C of G. Moving on to the next page then, now you've got all the weights. It means that we've got V1, VR, and V2, and also your landing data, of course, which you would populate during the uh, during the flight and the cruise when you've got the ATIS from your destination airport. They have also added a couple of options new into the options page as well. So if we just have a quick look at that, EFB brightness. So if you're flying at night time, that is perhaps a uh, bit more beneficial to you. And you can also change the display font as well. Just be careful though, as it does say, it can cause graphics overlapping. So in terms of the aircraft actual setup, they are all the main changes that they've made following the update. However, the full change log is available to see clicking the link in the video description down below because they really have added quite a lot of features, including also a lot of fixes to things that the community has reported back on. Things like the batteries charging whilst the charger is fixed off. They've also added the end of climb and descent symbols on the navigation map. So lots of little things that have been missing are now available. I think this is a great update and we'll probably continue to see the ATR getting updated as well. This is fast becoming one of my favorite aircraft outside of the Airbus. I think that is because a lot of the logic surrounding the aircraft and the McDo etc is very similar to the Airbus. So if you prefer the island hopping kind of flights and even some VFR flights, then the ATR is a great aircraft which I highly recommend. Have you got this aircraft yet? And if you haven't got it yet, do you think this update is now going to make you want to go and purchase this? This aircraft to enjoy the new features and flight a lot more realistically. I know many flight simmers would love to see something like the Dash 8 brought into Microsoft Flight Simulator, but obviously at the moment, this is probably the closest airliner that we have available, and it's a great addition to your Microsoft Flight Simulator hangar. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do consider hitting the like button. You can also now use Super Thanks on this channel. That has now been enabled if you want to support the channel even further. If you're new to the channel, of course, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos or, of course, our live streams. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye-bye for now.